You are going to die. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but one out of every one person dies. But what happens after you die? That is the age old question that the Bible speaks clearly about. Now I know what you're thinking. You don't believe the Bible and you definitely don't trust what the Bible has to say, but the Bible is the most historically verifiable book in all of antiquity. And the prophecies that were fulfilled in the Bible is statistically impossible. In fact, if you knew how impossible it was for those prophecies to be fulfilled, you wouldn't doubt the Bible for one second. But that's for another video. So I implore you to please just have an open mind at least for the next couple minutes. James 4.14 says that our life is like a vapor. That means it's here one second and gone the next. We have no idea when we're gonna die. We could die today, we could die tomorrow, we could die next year, 10 years from now. We have no idea and we have no control over our death. When I was younger, I was terrified of death. No matter what I did, I thought it was going to end in my death. Every time I stepped on a plane, I was convinced it was going to be my last day on earth. Now, it probably didn't help that I grew up with movies like Armageddon. It's what we call a global killer. The end of mankind. Or Titanic. <laughs> or that I watched the Twin Towers burn on live TV. But nonetheless, I was very aware of my own mortality. Deep down in my heart, I knew that God was real, but I didn't want to deal with him. I knew what God was calling me to, but I had better stuff that I wanted to do with my life. I foolishly believed that there were things that I needed to do before I could turn to God. And in my foolishness, I would tell myself, I'll get to God someday. Maybe when I'm older, I'll repent. Maybe when I'm older, I'll give my life to Christ. And if I ever happen to be on a plane that's crashing, I'll just say a prayer real quick, ask for forgiveness, and everything will be all good. How dumb was I? In Luke chapter 12, someone asked Jesus to tell their brother to split the inheritance. Jesus responds with the parable of the rich fool, and he says this, You fool, this very night your soul is demanded of you, and as for all that you have prepared, who will own it now? We tend to live for things that are completely meaningless. If you died tonight, the car you drive, the job you work, how much money you have, what you look like is completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters is what you did with your life. Did you live your life according to the will of God? There will be a day when every single one of us will stand before the judgment seat of God. Revelation 20 tells us about this in the great white throne judgment. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, the death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now these may be harsh words to hear, but you do not have to experience this. Today is the day of salvation. If you have ears to hear, please hear what I'm saying. Jesus died on the cross in the place of you. He took the punishment that you and I deserve, and he took on my sin and your sin so that we could be reconciled to God. Instead of looking at God like some mean man in the sky who came to make your life miserable, look at God as the loving father that he is, that he gave his only son to die in yours and my place. He loves you so much that he would pour out his wrath on his own son so that you could be in relationship with him. Colossians 1, 21 and 22 says this, and although you were previously alienated and hostile in attitude, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his body of flesh through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Jesus paid the ultimate price and it's up to us to accept that free gift. Stop running from God today. 
Today is the day of salvation. Do not wait any longer. Your life is like a vapor. It could be gone in a moment. Whether you believe me or not, when you die, you will stand before God and he, he will either embrace you with open arms or he will give you what you always wanted, eternity apart from him.